On March 20th, 2013, Zito and Garrett, along with their producer, Gentry Thomas, interviewed two National Football League Hall of Fame coaches, Iron Mike Ditka and the all-time winningest coach in NFL history, Don Shula. These two legendary coaches connected to support the United Way of Collier County. Coach Ditka paired with the Don to showcase his variety of wines from his Mike Ditka label wine collection. This memorable event was held at Shula's Steakhouse. Fans got a chance to rub elbows with the coaches, and Zito and Garrett got to ask them some questions. Hello everybody, we are Zito, Garrett, and Gentry. We are here at Shula's Steakhouse, and we are here to meet the Don, Don Shula and Coach Mike Ditka. We have a great charity for the United Way, and Garrett started. I'm gonna have a big steak. I'm hungry, I like it pink on the inside. <laughs> All right, everybody, we are Zito and Garrett, live from Shula Steakhouse with the uh, legendary uh, coach, Mike Ditka. How you doing, coach? I'm doing great. Thank uh, you. I got a, one question for you. Since the stroke, has your handicap gone down? No. It hasn't? No. I, 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 you know, I play good two days in a row. Today I played horrible, but I, I play. I love it. I don't get mad about it anymore. I'm, I know I have limitations, so I just play. Coach, I was just watching uh, In a Football Life on the NFL Network. And uh, didn't realize your great relationship that you had with Coach Landry. Can you talk? People remember you as a great Chicago Bear, as a player, the great coach. But you had some of your best years with the yeah. Cowboys. Can you talk about that conversation you had with Coach Landry when you came to Dallas? Well, honestly, I, I probably was a better player in Dallas because I was more of a team player than I was in Chicago. And I really cared about the success of the Cowboys. And Coach Landry was, uh, he was instrumental in my life. And, and, and let me tell you. When I was, I was playing in Philadelphia for two years, and nobody knows that, but the people in Philadelphia didn't know it either those two years, so it was that bad. <laughs> so I went home, and I was retired from football, basically, and, and I got a call from Coach Landry. He said, I just traded for you. And he said that I don't know if you can play any of them or not, but I just traded for you. And, uh, and I didn't say anything. He said, but I'll take, you know, I'll take a chance on you if you take a chance on you. I went down and got in the best shape of my life, played the best football I ever played. And then when I retired, I was in the, kind of the – bar business with these guys and we were doing pretty well and um, he called me in one day he says I'd like you to coach your receivers and I'd never thought about coaching so you know he's he's been the main guy in my life in, in both as a player and as a coach and uh, you know and then he got you know he told me when he said you're going to go you're going to get the Bears job he told me that and uh, you know the rest is history. Coach, we've talked about it uh, with you before, the changing game and the rules. And just today, uh, it came down, the owners voted uh, to go forward with banning that, uh, uh, that head-first uh, motion by a ball carrier, uh, leading with the crown of the helmet. Um, the game seems to be changing, obviously, you know, because of the concussion problems. Is it getting too far away from what it was? Yeah, it, it sounds good, but you can't do that. I mean, I'm really, the natural instinct of a player is to lower his head when he's going to hit contact, and it's not to injure anybody. Uh, you know, I understand what the league's trying to do. I really do. I think, you're, I think they've overstepped it here. I don't think it'll work the way they want it to work. I, it just, it's just too far-fetched. Didn't you say about uh, eight, ten years ago that you had a fix for this? That if they just removed the face mask, uh, that, that would be the. That how, would be a, how would that affect the game if they removed the well, face mask? People wouldn't be striking with their helmet that much. They'd be striking with their shoulders. When the game of football was taught and coached for years, uh, until this era, it was shoulder tackling, arm tackling, maybe even, but not not spearing a guy with your head and knocking him to the ground because the helmet was not as sophisticated in those days. They, they built the best helmet you can have right now. But by building that, it's become a weapon. So when you put it on, you have no fear. So you'll strike with your head. That's not what was supposed to be meant, but that's what happened. So you can't change the helmet. Take the face mask off. A lot of these cutie pies are going to stick their head in there. <laughs> Coach, we're out here with the, uh, with the United Way. Tell us a little bit about the charity that we're, uh, we're well, out here. It's a great charity. I mean, they help everybody. It's not isolated to one, one or two different uh, special charities. The United Way does so much for so many people. Probably the most universal charity in our country. And what are you, uh, what are you looking to eat for dinner tonight? Well, I... They say that Don's steaks are as good as anybody's. Our steaks are good. We have good steaks, but I'm gonna probably I'm gonna try a steak. You got a lot of competition with Coach Shula in the steakhouses? No, we got three. We're open a fourth one in Arizona, so we're not in competition with anybody. I mean, there's so many good places to eat in America. If you go to a bad one, it's your fault. <laughs> 
You know, you mentioned that you worked in the bar business for a little bit. I didn't know that. Yeah, a nightclub bar, you know, singles bar, whatever you want to call it. I picture you as a bouncer. How many people did you have to throw out into the street? Well, I, I didn't. We, we had bouncers, but there were some rude people in Dallas at that time, so we kicked a few out. Coach, you're getting up there uh, in years. Not that you're, uh, I don't yeah. want to say you're getting too old, but <laughs> at, at, at your age, you should be on the golf course every day of the week, retired, just enjoying the no. finer things in life. But you got a hot sauce, you got your own ribs, you got your own wine, you got your own restaurants, you're on ESPN, you're here at a, uh, a charity event. What keeps driving you at your age to keep working as hard as you do? Well, that stuff, people come to me and they want to do it. And, and we've had some success. We had a great line of cigars made by David Off. We've got some great wine made by the Toledo Wine Company out of Napa. Um, and, you know, I have the restaurants. Uh, you know, we have sauces. You're right. We do have those. But, you know, anything is only as good as the people who push it and market it. You know, you can, people might buy a product with my name on it or Coach Schuller's one time. But if that product can't hold up, they're not going to buy it again. So, I mean, yeah, you say, I have no ego about it, believe me. You know, whether they buy mine or Heinz or anybody else, that's their business. But uh, we have some good products, and sometimes people buy them, and, it, you know, I'm never going to get wealthy off of it, believe me. Never. <laughs> Coach Dicka, drive for show, putt for dough. Thanks for coming out here and right. hanging with us, and we'll uh, talk you to guys. you real soon. Thank you. There's the coach. All right, it's Zito and Garrett live from Shula Steakhouse. The legendary Don Shula is our our guest. Thanks uh, so much for taking the time talking to us, coach. Yeah, glad to do it. Uh, it's an exciting night here in Naples. I hear it's uh, for the United Way, huh? United Way. We we've done a lot for um, United Way at Miami, and then also when I've had an opportunity to do something over here, we've done United Way. They just do a great job, and we want to help every way we can. I just, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question about the 1972 Dolphins. Um, it's, They're fun to talk about. It, it's got to be fun to talk about. And I always <laughs> hear this story, but I want to get it straight from the horse's mouth. They say every year when the last undefeated team loses that you guys get together. Now, is that a bunch of malarkey or tell us a little bit about It's a what bunch happened. of malarkey. It is. Yeah. Uh, the thing that happened is... Um, one year, that last undefeated team got beat, and Bonacani and Dick Anderson lived next door to each other down in Coral Gables, and they went out into the parking lot, opened a bottle of champagne, and toasted each other, and they were too cheap to invite us to the party. <laughs> does, it, does it bug you then when that, that uh, story keeps getting circulated? Yeah, but, you know, it's just, um, they depict us as a bunch of angry old guys. Yeah. But you know, um, I don't. I don't think Joe DiMaggio was ever ashamed of his 56-game hitting streak. I thought he was pretty proud of that. Right. So I think that you know, when you got something to be proud of, be proud and, and not be ashamed. All right, you've got a lot of things to be proud of because you hold so many records um, as a coach. Is there what, what one thing as you look at your career? Is there what, what one thing or one game, or is there one particular moment? that stands out, that you go back to in your mind, that is, that is just the highlight? Or a low light. <laughs> <laughs> low light's fine, too. We like those kind of stories. The low light was the Jets Super Bowl. Namath guaranteed the victory. And, uh, and then they went out and beat us. <laughs> and uh, so that was, that was pretty hard to live down. My, my relationship with our owner was never quite the same after that. He was from New York, and all his New York buddies really let him have it. So I lasted one more year, and I moved from, you know, Baltimore to Miami. Coach, you were telling us earlier uh, before the interview that your son is a uh, quarterback's coach for Carolina, working with Cam Newton. you got to be a very proud father. You're a great motivator. What kind of advice do you give your son that you kind of hand down to him? What's the best advice you can give your son as an up-and-coming coach in the league? Yeah, he's uh, just got moved up to offensive coordinator and uh, you know he's a guy that's worked hard he played uh, quarterback at Alabama and then he played a little bit in the NFL and he was on my staff for a while and uh, uh, hopefully learned some things that are going to be important to him but I think the most important advice you can give anybody that's in the coaching profession is do it within the framework of your own personality don't try to be Paul Bear Bryant or don't try to be Don Shuler. Don't try to be Vince Lombardi. 
because the players sense that. In a minute that they sense that you're trying to be somebody other than who you are, then you, leave, you lose your ability to, to lead. So do it, you know, believe in what you're doing, do it within the framework of your own personality. Somebody told me a great story today when I said that I was going to talk to you, that there's another Don out there, Donald Trump, who you had some negotiations with after that 72 season. They tried to lure you away from the NFL and get you in the USFL. Can you tell that story of getting that call from Donald Trump and him trying to negotiate uh, getting you out of the National Football League? He used to call me every Monday night when we weren't playing in the Monday night game, and he knew I'd be home watching the Monday night game. So the phone would ring and it would be Donald Trump. <laughs> and he was trying to, he had just bought the New Jersey Generals. And Herschel Walker was his number one pick. So he was trying to get me to go up there to coach. And uh, he was supposed to come down and meet my wife and family. And, and uh, that day, I think we played in Baltimore. And um, on the way to the airport, he was on TV saying that he is going to go down and negotiate with me. And the only thing that's keeping me from signing with him was I was demanding a triplex in Trump Tower as part of the deal. And I didn't even know what a triplex was, but he was selling all the time, you know, advertising his own uh, Trump Tower uh, building. Coach, do you think that anybody's ever going to beat this 1972 Dolphin season, perfect 17-0. and It hasn't been done in over 40 years. That's a long time. You think it's going to happen? You know, it's not 40 years. It was 40 years before we did it, and then it's been 40 years since we've done it. So that's 80-some years. And there's only been one team that's done it. So that, I think that tells you a little bit about how hard, how hard it is to do. But never say never. And what I've always said is... is if somebody does it, I'm going to be the first guy to call that coach and congratulate them. And I'm sure our players will call their players and congratulate them if they do it within the rules and in a, in a way that uh, we're proud of how it was done. When you watch games today, these days, do you yell at the TV? Do you, do you get mad and, and say you're obviously making a mistake, you know, from the coaches, you know, and think I... I wish I was there to teach them how to do it, and they're doing it all wrong. I don't think I yell, but you know, I think I, I have some of those feelings that you just talked about. And uh, when I'm watching a game, and, and you know, my son is coaching in that game, and I usually take notes. And when I have a chance to talk to him quietly, then I, I talk to him quietly without you know, making him think that he's not doing anything right. And uh, you got to be careful in situations like that. But if you see something that you think is going to help, then you want to make sure that you, uh, you let the, the coach know that uh, you think you can help them. Coach, what about the Dolphins uh, picking up a couple of uh, key players, letting go? Maybe a few key players. What do you think about their recent moves, and how do you like the way they look in 2013? You know, I like everything about what's going on there. I like Tannehill, the quarterback. You know, he's a good athlete. He was a wide receiver uh, his junior year in college. Then they made him a quarterback, so you see that athletic ability that he has moving around, and then he obviously can throw the football. And the coach is a heck of a guy and a, and a good coach. He was a, an assistant at Green Bay, you know, and with all of the great players that they have, Aaron Rodgers and some of the other people at Green Bay. He was all part of that, so he knows how to win. And I think it's just a time period of time where he gets everybody down there headed in the right direction and, and hopefully can pull it off. We appreciate you talking to us. Uh, the legendary coach Don Shula, Zito and Garrett, live from Shula's Steakhouse. You got a good piece of meat here, Coach. <laughs> Who's got a better steak, you or Ditka? <laughs> Is Ditka around here anyone? <laughs> he just told us that his blows yours out of the water. I said, those are fighting words. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere close to him because he's bigger and tougher than I am. And I'll say it if you don't tell him that I said it. You got it. We won't say a word, Coach. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Coach. It's Steinomite.